today we're going to begin our studies on ancient Egypt. We're going to be learning how to use hieroglyphs to write our name and some other words too. So what you will need today are some crayons, paper, and if you have them, some watercolor paints. If you don't have them, I'll talk to you about what else you can use. All right, gather your supplies and let's okay, get started. So I have my white piece of paper and um, I am going to, I forgot to mention, you might also want to have something with a straight edge again. Uh, you won't need it for a whole lot, just a little bit to get you started. Uh, I'm going to take my pencil and you will be having some uh, hieroglyph sheets at if you're at home, it'll be on Seesaw. If you're at school, I'm going to have some handouts for you to look at. And on these hieroglyph sheets, uh, you will notice that there are symbols and then letters to go with them. The letters are the translation for the English sounds and hieroglyphs are the ancient Egyptians way of writing. And they look like little pictures because that's exactly what they were. It's one of the very first forms of writing that humans ever developed. Um, and it took a long time for people to be able to read them because there's actually over 700 different symbols. Um, thank goodness a discoverer years and years ago um, discovered the Rosetta Stone, and the Rosetta Stone had hieroglyphs translated into some of other languages that we could understand, so we were able to figure it out from that one thing, all the different um, hieroglyphs and what they mean. And if you ever uh, get the chance to look at ancient Egyptian artwork, you'll notice there's a lot of times hieroglyphs written right next to the artwork. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, in the background, let me show you the finish. This is not what we're going to do all today, but we're going to be working on this paper. And you'll notice I wrote hieroglyphs in the background. And do you see this kind of oval shape with a bar across the bottom? That is called a cartouche. And a cartouche is usually um, someone's name. It's kind of like I'm going to just use two vertical lines parallel to each other. Parallel means they're going the same way. Vertical means they're just going up and down. And I just drew them just enough to leave a little room. And then at the top, I'm just going to draw a curve and a curve at the bottom. And then just a bar that fits right there. After you get that done, I suggest you stop drawing with pencil and then switch over to crayon. Now, I usually draw with peach crayon, but if I do that right now, you're probably going to have a hard time seeing what I actually write. So I will draw with uh, brown so that you can see better. Uh, if you don't have peach, you could use uh, yellow. You could use brown like I'm doing too, um, just so you can see the difference. Sometimes I've even, I think orange would look good. What you wanna do is kind of stick with earth tones, maybe some warm colors. Um, if you have no other colors, black would work really good too. So now I've outlined my cartouche shape with my crayon. And now I am going to write hieroglyphs. I'm going to use my name and I suggest you use yours. Now you could use your first, your last, your middle. Um, when you're looking at the hieroglyph sheets, you might want to take a look at all of them before you start because some of them can be quite challenging to draw um, and you might find an easier symbol um, on another piece of paper. So because there is actually sometimes um, letters that show up in more than one place, even in the same sheet. So take a look at all of those. Now if I look for the letter P, I'm going to do Porter for P for Porter. Um, it's just a box on this one and I think I can draw that free I'm just going to go like this, P, O, and O is kind of this lasso shape. I've had a lot of practice. If you want to practice writing this on another piece of paper before you do it on here, I think that's a great idea. I've had a lot of practice, so I can just draw it without worrying about it. R, T, a T, let's see, the T looks like, oh, I can't find it on here. So if you can't find it on one sheet, oh, there it is right here too, but if you can't ever find one on one of the sheets, then look on the other because chances are it's on there. So T is a loaf, it's just like a half a circle. And I have to do an E, which is like a feather sort of. I couldn't find it on the E on this sheet, so I went over to this sheet and it looks like a little feather um, right there. 
don't know if you guys can see it. And I have to do another R, which is just this kind of football mouth shape. Okay, after you have that done, you've got all this extra space, and what you want to do is fill this with hieroglyphs too. Now, you can uh, take time and write out um, special things for you. Maybe you have some hobbies and you'd like to write that down, or you'd like to write out um, a sentence in hieroglyphs, you can. It's also okay with me if you want to just choose random hieroglyph letters. Uh, that is cool also with me. So I might spell out the word art, which is an eagle. A is kind of like this eagle-y shape. So I'm going to draw that. I've had a lot of practice drawing hieroglyphs, so um, you don't have to be perfect on these. If you make a mistake, it's okay. Um, R, we know, was a mouth. So I'm going to write art. And the T was a loaf. I'm going to try to fill this whole paper with uh, hieroglyphs. Like I said, you can spell out words. Make sure they're school appropriate. No silly business here. And um, because I, I can translate them pretty easily. But um, you want to fill this whole page. When I get that done, I'll show you what it looks like. All right. So I have this uh, completely filled. You notice I draw my hieroglyphs uh kind of large and that's so that I don't have to do a lot of them and it makes it a little bit easier especially when you're drawing with a crayon if you make them larger. Now if you are at school with me we're going to be doing a watercolor technique next and if you're at home and you have watercolors you can certainly do this as well. If you're at home and you do not have watercolors I suggest you take a crayon and uh, just start coloring the whole paper with the side of your crayon so that you get a light value uh, all over this. You can blend colors together using browns, uh, peaches, uh, those earth tones, even a little bit of black. As long as you're not covering up your hieroglyphs, that will be fine. So if you're at school with me, I am going to probably give you a scrap paper. This is just to keep your work area, your desk, uh, from getting messy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little bit of a wash of watercolor. And you'll notice there's some crayons floating around on the top, the little crayon crumbs. Uh, but watercolor is just, um, it's just a little bit of brown. And I'm gonna use lots of this color. I'm gonna fill this. I don't, I actually kind of want the colors to puddle. The neat thing is if you use a lighter color um, with your crayon, it is fun to watch this dark brown watercolor kind of just pop off of there. It won't stick to that at all, especially if you press really firmly with your crayon. So I'm gonna get this all on here as quick as I can and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've got this all painted. Um, by the way, if you don't have brown watercolor, you can always make brown by mixing um, all of the colors together usually and you'll get a brown. Now before this has a chance to dry, sometimes um, if I don't have watercolors I've been known to use coffee or even tea to do the same thing. It's the same color so why not? Just make sure there's no sugar or anything in it when you're doing that. Now I'm going to take a piece of plastic wrap that you can buy at the grocery store and I'm just going to place that over the top and that's all you have to do today. Hopefully you've written your name on this before uh, you get started. Now here's the deal. You don't want to move this, just let it dry with a plastic wrap on it. It's going to take some time, but that's okay because this is all we're doing for the rest of art. And what will happen when it's dry, this will just come right off, and you'll notice it kind of leaves this wrinkly sort of texture, which is perfect for ancient Egypt because it's so old that a lot of things have cracked and they're a little rustic looking, and so we're trying to get that. Next week, um, next time, we're gonna start working on our person. This is just an example of one person. We'll give you some more choices on how you design your person, um, but remember, uh, have fun with this, and just because you don't always have the same supplies as me at home, ex experiment, try some different things out, um, and whatever works for you is fine with me. Have a great time doing this, and I can't wait to see what you've made. Until next time, goodbye. Bye.